Today, let's talk about the amazing things we can observe in the sky. The sun, moon, and stars. Have you ever looked up at the sky, and noticed that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west every day? This happens because the earth is spinning on its axis, like a top spinning around. As the earth spins, it moves from west to east, making it look like the sun is moving from east to west in the sky. The same thing happens with the moon. When you look up at night, you might see the moon rising in the east, and setting in the west, just like the sun. But the moon also moves across the sky, just like the sun. Sometimes the moon is up during the day, but it's harder to see, because the bright sunlight makes it harder to notice. Now let's talk about the stars. At night, you can see lots of stars, twinkling in the sky. But did you know that you can't see them during the day? That's because the bright light from the sun makes it too hard to see the stars. But at night, when the sun is on the other side of the earth, we can see the stars shining bright. And if you look at the stars carefully, you will notice that they also move across the sky, just like the sun and moon. But instead of moving from east to west, the stars move from north to south. This is because the Earth, is also moving around the Sun, so it looks like the stars are moving in the opposite direction. So, by observing the Sun, Moon, and stars, we can see patterns in their movements, and predict where they will be in the sky at different times of day and night. It's pretty cool, isn't it? On a dark, clear night, you can look up in the sky and get a good view of thousands of stars. But what is a star? A star is a huge ball of hot, glowing gases held together by its own gravity. Stars come in different sizes and colors, temperatures and brightness, and sometimes have unusual characteristics. The closest star to Earth is our own sun. Like everything else in nature, stars are born, live out their days, and die, sometimes spectacularly. Although stars are not actually alive, they do have a life cycle, stages and steps that they go through from beginning to end. And in the beginning, there is only dust and gas. This giant molecular cloud is called a stellar nursery, and this is where baby stars are formed. Turbulence in the cloud creates knots and clumps of material. When a knot is large enough, it collapses under its own gravity, creating a core that begins to heat up. This hot core is called a protostar. The gravitational pull of the protostar will continue to attract dust and gas over time, and the increased mass will cause the core to become hotter and denser. Once the core is hot enough and dense enough, fusion kicks off, and the hydrogen gas begins to turn into helium. A star that is fusing hydrogen is not a protostar any longer, but has entered something called the main sequence. The life of a star on the main sequence is a constant battle against gravity. Stars are so massive that if gravity was the only force working on them, they would collapse immediately. Fortunately, stars have super hot cores that create pressure and work against gravity, producing a state of equilibrium. The star will be okay as long as the force of gravity pulling the gases inward and pressure from the core pushing the gases outward are in balance. Eventually, however, the star will run out of hydrogen to convert into helium, and when that happens, gravity wins. The inner layers of the star begin to collapse, increasing heat and pressure at the core. Meanwhile, the outer layers expand several hundred times their normal size, and the star becomes a red giant. or if the original star was massive enough, a red supergiant. When a medium-sized star becomes a red giant, there is temporarily enough heat and pressure in the core to fuse helium into carbon, preventing further collapse. 
Once the helium is gone, however, the core collapses again, and the outer layers of the star are blown away. The collapsed core becomes a white dwarf, a dense, slowly cooling remnant about the size of a planet. The atoms in a white dwarf are so close together that it simply cannot collapse anymore. But once the stored heat in it is gone, it will no longer glow and will become a black dwarf, spinning darkly in space. The fate of massive stars is a very different one. A red supergiant will also fuse helium into carbon. But once the helium is gone, there is enough mass to power other fusion reactions, including iron. When there's nothing left to fuse, the core is no longer producing energy, and gravity wins. The temperature of the core rises to over a hundred billion degrees. The iron atoms are crushed together, and the core pushes out from the heart of the star in an explosive shock wave. This shock wave causes a huge explosion called a supernova, which blasts most of the material left in the star out into interstellar space. So much energy is released in a supernova that for a few days it can shine brighter than an entire galaxy. The core that remains might collapse into either a small, dense object called a neutron star, or if it is more massive, it may collapse into a black hole. The leftover gases from the death of a star may eventually form a new stellar nursery, where brand new stars can be created. I hope you enjoyed learning about stars today. Goodbye till next time.